Hi and welcome to lesson 13, the lymphatic system. Like all of our other anatomy and physiology videos, we release half of these publicly on our YouTube channel, while the other half, as well as all of our other videos, over 200 as of today, are available exclusively at mrfordsclass.net. Your membership allows us to make these videos as well as future videos. So if you haven't checked out our website, please do so. Once again, that is mrfordsclass.net. So let's get into what we're going to talk about, and this is the lymphatic system. Just to give you a heads up, when I was putting this together, most lymphatic systems in textbooks incorporate the lymphatic system and the immune system. And for the most part, this kind of makes sense from a book standpoint. But as I was developing this for a video, I kind of decided that it would be better to do the lymphatic system separately. As we look at the structure and function of the lymphatic system on its own, and we have a different series on the immune system, which would come after the lymphatic system. This will make sense, and I hope that this will help you retain this information even better. So let's begin with video one of our lesson 13, the introduction to the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is composed of lymph, lymph vessels, lymph tissue, and lymph organs. In our introduction videos, our whole introduction to anatomy and physiology, we describe the lymphatic system as basically being kind of a big straw in a marshland where the body accumulates fluid and the lymphatic system goes and sucks all that fluid back in. So the functions, it brings material back to the blood system. It carries fluid from the tissue space back to the blood. Blood capillaries will leak fluid out. We want them to do this. In fact, the blood capillaries are where we have the gas exchange and liquids going in and liquids coming back out and all this good stuff. We want that to happen. And it reabsorbs about 85% of the fluid it leaks out which means there's about 15% that it doesn't bring back in. So the lymphatic system is going to get the latecomers. It's going to get the stuff that doesn't make it back into the blood capillaries. It also carries away protein and large particles that are just too big to get into the capillaries, the blood capillaries area. The lymphatic system also has a very important function in the immune system, which is why they're usually tied together. As far as immunity goes, because that the lymphatic system is bringing in all this stuff from out the body, all this stuff that's found in the surrounding tissues, it also wants to make sure it's all clean before it gets back into the bloodstream. And so we find that there are a lot of um, stuff in the lymphatic system and the lymph nodes and, and throughout that are going to check the incoming materials for stuff that doesn't belong there. Bacteria, viruses, damaged, dying cells, things like that. Also, the lymphatic system has something to do with lipid absorption. What we find is that in the small intestines, it will absorb dietary lipids that are just too big to get through the blood capillaries. So what is lymph? We're talking about a fluid here. So what is this whole lymphatic system? What is this lymph? That's part of the lymphatic system. Lymph is a clear colorless fluid for the most part. It's very similar to blood plasma. Now lymph can be more of a creamy white, especially if it's high in those dietary lipids that we just talked about. But in general, lymph is going to be a clear colorless fluid, again, very similar to blood plasma. As blood moves to the circulatory system, fluid and small molecules will pass from the plasma into the surrounding tissues. Also found within lymph are large molecules that cannot pass into the blood capillaries, like large proteins, fats, and other substances. So basically, the lymphatic system is there to get back all that extra fluid and all that other stuff that just won't go back in through the circulatory system. Lymph, the fluid, is composed of different things. As lymph first flows from tissues into the capillaries, it's pretty much the same as interstitial fluid, the fluid surrounding the tissues. The protein concentration is around two grams per deciliter. In some tissues, it can even be as high as six grams per deciliter. A major route for the absorption of nutrients from the gastrointestinal tract. So it's going to pick up stuff from the GI tract. And we just said a minute ago, the dietary lipids. 
we also find some other stuff within the lymph. For example, we find hormones, we find bacteria, we can find viruses, cellular debris, and macrophages. Now, some of this, like I said, will be covered in more detail when we start talking about the immune system. There is one other thing I want to talk about before we move on, and that is something called edema. Edema is what happens when the lymphatic system fails. What occurs here is that fluid will build up in the surrounding tissue. For the most part, we're going to find this in our legs. An uh, example I use in my face-to-face -face class is my wife during our first child, our first pregnancy, and her legs were really swollen. And she had something called pitting edema, where you could push in and it would leave an indentation, thus it would leave a pit, pitting edema. And as I'm, you know, next to my wife, I'm sitting in the chair and she's on the bed and I'm, you know, I'm going, ooh, look at that. And I'm, you know, rubbing her leg. I'm like, I love you, honey, I love you. And I push, and I'm like, ooh, cool, honey, look at this pitting edema. And she's like, yep, yep. And I push in again. I'm like, ooh, this is cool. And then I pushed in, pushed in. And as I was going for the smiley face, she was like, stop it. But you get the idea. So that's edema. It's where we have a buildup of fluid because the lymphatic system is not bringing it back to where it belongs. In our next video, we're going to take a look at the pathway that the lymph takes.